Dienes are examples of conjugated systems. They contain two alkenes in conjugation. When they react with strong acids, they behave much like you'd expect alkenes to. But there's a little bit of added complexity because of the, of the delocalized nature of the pi bonds. Let's look at the simplest example to begin, the reaction of 1,3-butadiene with HCl. If we were treating each alkene as an isolated alkene, we'd expect the product of this reaction to be 3-chloro-1-butene. The mechanism would involve one of the alkenes attacking sigma star HCl, adding an H atom here, resulting in a secondary carbocation, and the carbocation being intercepted by the chloride like this. And this is one of the products we observe. I should note that the H doesn't add to one of the internal carbons because the resulting carbocation would not be stabilized by resonance. And we generally form the most stable carbocation during alkene additions. But we also get one more product, 1-chloro-2-butene, in which the new H and Cl have added to opposite ends of the four carbon system. So what's going on here? In order to understand this outcome, we need to examine the intermediate we formed after the first step. The carbocation is resonance stabilized and conjugated. And if we draw its alternate resonance structure, we see that the positive charge is delocalized. It's spread out between the two carbon atoms. If the chloride nucleophile attacks this other carbon, we can understand the outcome. This is actually quite generalizable. When dienes react with any strong acid, like HCl, HBr, HI, H2SO4, or even the generic H3O+, the acidic proton goes to one of the terminal carbons to produce a resonance-stabilized allylic carbocation. This carbocation has its positive charge distributed over two different carbons, and the nucleophile can hypothetically, at least, add to either one. If the protonation step at either end gives different carbocations, we can usually tell which one of the two regioisomeric cations is formed by comparing carbocation stability. For 2-methylbutadiene, for instance, protonation at this end gives a carbocation that has its positive charge delocalized between the tertiary and the primary site, but protonation at the other end gives a carbocation delocalized between a secondary and a primary site. Since tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary ones, the first regioisomer is the preferred one. But even that compound can give two possible products, depending on where the chloride attacks. If the chloride attacks here, adjacent to where the H added, we call this 1-2 addition. But if the chloride attacks here, at the other end, we call this 1-4 addition. This gets complicated pretty quickly. In fact, many addition reactions of dienes give mixtures of products. Luckily, there are some principles that allow, that allow us to favor one product or another if we control the conditions of the reaction. That is the topic for the next video. But before we dive into that topic, it may be valuable for us to show how MO theory plays into this. If we look at the HOMO of a diene, the most relevant orbital for alkene addition reactions, it's a conjugated orbital with just one node, and it looks like this. You might notice that the lobes on the outside or terminal carbons are larger than those on the inside carbons. That's a major reason why the hydrogen initially goes to one of those terminal carbons. That's where the majority of the electron density resides in the HOMO of the reactant. Then, when we have this resonance-stabilized allylic carbocation, its LUMO is this. It looks like an empty p-orbital spread out 
between the two carbons where we can draw the positive charge. And it's to either of those carbons that the chloride can add.